Welcome to our next episode of the Patient Voice Amplified. I'm Adam Charrington and happy to have you here. And I'm Dan Check. It's good to be with you today. We are so honored to welcome Sara Vazy, uh, Executive Vice President, Chief Strategy and Digital Officer for Providence Health. And uh, Sara, so happy to see you. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. I'm really excited for today's conversation. Uh, as are we. Uh, it's a treat to have you here. And uh, uh, Sara, we've been able to work with you on a few things over the, the past little while. And uh, I, I seem to see your name at a lot of conferences and a lot of people want to know what, how you see healthcare and specifically digital health. And so uh, why don't we jump in and just get a little bit about your background and how you got to Providence. Absolutely. You know, I I spent my entire career either in healthcare or adjacent to healthcare. I've been with Providence. It'll be seven years in January, primarily in the digital team. So I, I joined in 2016, back before digital health was what it is today. And um, and um, you know, prior to that, I was uh, actually a management consultant, but in the provider side, very kind of niche focused on serving large integrated delivery networks and uh, and academic medical centers uh, around enterprise strategy, population health strategy, built a couple of population health companies um, through that work. And then prior to that, I was uh, sort of at the intersection of health services research and health policy, worked with um, many agencies um, like the Office of the Insurance Commissioner, the Office of Financial Management, and the Healthcare Authority in Washington State to basically develop um, programs based on based on health services research that were sort of focused on things like um, uh, early state-sponsored medical home initiatives or, um, you know, controlling for avoidable variability in rates of surgical procedures uh, for certain types of conditions. And um, a lot of early work in HIPAA and high tech um, back in like 2007. So uh, this goes way back. And then, um, and then prior to that, I was a scientist at a medical device company, did a lot of work in therapeutic ultrasound. And, um, and so it's always been either translational research, uh, sort of in the, in the med, uh, med tech space or healthcare. And um, I really love it in spite of all of its frustrations or perhaps because of it. <laughs> uh, do you ever sleep? Do you know what sleep is? I sleep eight hours every night and make a point of it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And, and I'd just like to point out to our listeners, she's also a super mom. And so uh, juggling healthcare and helping it move along plus taking care of a family, uh, that's, that's commendable. So, Sarah, as you know, our our podcast is dedicated to understanding how do we listen to patients more? How do we include them in healthcare tech uh, and literally amplify their voice? And so where do you see healthcare evolving to be more patient-centric? I mean, I, and, and I hesitate to use the term patient-centric. Everybody claims that and says that, but really where is that innovating and happening? It's happening in a lot of places, though I would say we've struggled in general, as a as a sector within the provider space and as an industry overall, in achieving that um, meaningfully, but I'll I'll give an example. You know, Providence, we have a promise um, at the system to our patients, it, which is know me, care for me, ease my way, and that know me piece is very very important. And fundamentally, it gets to data and understanding a person across, you know, who they are as a whole person rather than just these sort of spot episodic clinical encounters. And um, and the solving the sort of data problem around the fragmentation of the data, whether it be fragmented across the journey of a user or fragmented different sources, so you only get a sliver of visibility into who they are. Um, solving that fragmentation problem is the first step in solving the fragmentation of the experience, the fragmentation of, or, you know, just how the experience may not be relevant or have utility to an individual and their real life needs. So we're working on that, um, a lot. And, um, and, and that know me piece is the, is the first piece of it. We've built a couple of technologies, 
Um, uh, one is called our consumer data platform, which is primarily um, used for understanding um, of our existing patients that we've seen in the past, what are their needs now? Like, what are they, quote, in the market for um, based on how they're searching for things on our digital properties, their um, previous clinical interactions with us, and then um, surfacing up things to them that we think are relevant. So, for instance, if someone keeps searching for knee pain or, um, you know, how do I find a physical therapist or things like that on our site, we know that they may need um, some sort of orthopedic care. And so we're then able to serve up information to them via different channels, via what they see from a personalized perspective on the website, via direct mail, via email, Um uh, they can actually, we can say, hey, have you considered coming in to see an orthopedist or see your primary care provider for a referral, right? So again, it's relevant to them. And the crux of it, the anchor is that um, that consumer data platform. Another body of work that we're doing is around identity-driven engagement. And identity is sort of the theme here in general, which is um, knowing an individual is about more than their clinical state, and pulling identity out of just the clinical record is one of the key steps to that, right? So we've built um, what we call a consumer identity and engagement platform that pulls the identity out, doesn't require you uh, of the clinical record. It doesn't require you to be an existing patient to have an account with us. You can create that account separately. And um, and then it builds, you know, depending on how much you engage with us, whether you do have a clinical record to link to it, it builds on like kind of progressive levels of authentication and richness of what we know about you. Again, coming back to the theme of Nomi um, to to then build experiences. So those are some of the areas where I think, you know, it's like the first steps in the direction of delivering something that's more person centered. Um, uh, it's from the lens of the consumer or the patient. It's not from our lens, right? We just ha have to know what what they what matters to them, what you know, what their sort of profile is, um, so we can serve them. Fantastic. That's great. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I was going to ask on this concept. I'm curious. One of the things I always find fascinating is how much other industries know about me as a consumer. So you talk about this consumer data platform. If I go into the retail space, for example, they know my preferences. They know that typically, you know, if I'm shopping for clothes, they know the size that will fit me best. They know the types of clothes I want to buy. Exactly. How, how do you augment what you're doing with what you see in the clinical space uh, with outside data sources to help you really understand these patients as consumers? Yeah, so um, so you you called out like um, they know about your previous behavior, what things have worked for you, and like the consumer data platform pulls in again, like like the the clinical data is what it is, um, but also web behavior, um, interactions with um, with our other digital properties like our mobile application. Um, uh, social determinant data, like what's, you know, what's your demographic data, where you live, what might be some spe specific concerns based on that community in which you live, um, financial data, you know, like all of these different sources um, are, uh, are stitched together with your clinical data to create a full profile. So, um, uh, you know, I, I would say that's the, the, um, the key is the um, is all of the various things that your behaviors, what's worked for you in the past, and and you can do that. And then how you're um, and across all of these different types of sources. Uh, so one example is um, we have this identity driven engagement, the consumer identity and engagement platform that we've built, we've instrumented the whole thing. So we can see how folks are clicking through different components of it. There's nothing to do with clinical behavior, right? We can see like what's resonating with folks, essentially what's got utility to them. We know that, uh, 80% of the people also click into their clinical record. We know that 60% of people are just booking an appointment, even whether they're an existing patient or a new patient. 
we know that 30% of people are looking for wellness content and like our blog information. And so we've fully instrumented it and pulled it together into one place and then can use that to drive clinical things that we think are valuable to the user. So we have something called next best action that, um, that is informed by all of these different things. Um, but it fundamentally comes back to um, seeing how they, not just like what they tell us, like survey stuff, you know, surveys are fine. They're post hoc. They're sort of, um, uh, you know, perception after the fact kind of a thing. Um, but in the moment we can see how they actually behave and then, um, and then use that to inform um, actions that we engage in with them. Sarah, we know that Providence is known for developing some unique things, and uh, you, you have an incubator of sorts uh, at Providence. Uh, would love to hear kind of that thought process, uh, and meaning, uh, you know, when you when you decide to build something versus go search for something, and and you know, to stay on the theme of the the podcast, what do you include patients somehow? How are they involved and what does that look like? Yeah, so overall, our incubation process is that first and foremost, it has to be anchored on um, a problem that we're trying to solve or an opportunity for our own communities, as well as, you know, with the assumption that Providence is not some unique special flower, right? We have, um, we are, Part, we're an integrated delivery network that has a lot of diversity across our each of the regions in which we operate. And so we're almost like, um, you know, multiple smaller systems and that our problems are probably the problems that other folks have as well. And so um, generally speaking, not kind of idiosyncratic to just our organization. As a result, you know, like we, we look for those pain points. We then validate whether others have the same problem or opportunity. We sort of get as specific as we possibly can um, because uh, it, it's difficult to actually build technology or to even evaluate technology if you're just sort of living in like a very high level kind of place um, conceptually. Um, we disaggregate and get really specific around problems. We do a build by that is much more holistic than like, features and functionality, right? That's features and functionality are fine, but actually um, most EMRs kind of cover the bases when it comes to features and functionality. They could build every single widget and like capability within the context of the EMR for the most part. Um, but how it comes together in a customer experience is not necessarily um, or a journey or, you know, sort of how it provides visibility for us in terms of data, how it supports us in differentiating our customer experience relative to others. Like we look at a build by opportunity very holistically, not just like, can you do X, Y, and Z? Um, yes or no. And so um, from a feature functionality standpoint, so we, we do that work. Um, business model is always a big part of our evaluation because much of what we deal with today is that the business model in healthcare is like fundamentally broken, right? And, and where value accrues is not necessarily where value is generated. So you know, we've got this like massive distribution problem from an economic standpoint in healthcare in that insurance companies have made record profits while health systems have really struggled, especially over the last year um, with costs going up and um, like around inflation, as well as just, you know, sort of healthcare specific things around workforce shortage and things like that. So, um, so so we look at the business model as one key driver. And often it's about like making the business model work for each of the different constituents across the value chain. Um, if we don't find something out in the market or like something that already meets our needs internally, um, <clears throat> we, will, um, we will often build around sort of a set of theses. Um, the thesis primarily is that um, digital transformation from a consumer facing perspective in healthcare is focused on, uh, and in many other industries, frankly, like any industry that is not digitally native, it should be focused on or has been historically differentiated sort of digitally enabled ways of generating, aggregating and capturing demand. That's what it's all about. Like what happened in the airline industry, um, 
around Expedia and, you know, these kinds of companies. Um, that was what it was about. It was putting, um, generating demand in a different way by aggregating it, putting into, a, you know, sort of a marketplace where um, users could buy. And then, you know, that that's what demand capture is. They could buy it and then they created loyalty programs. So they could capture it on an ongoing basis. And then, of course, like the individual airlines started coming up with their own solutions. And so that's how the space evolved. And that's now we're at the beginning stages of that in healthcare. And so so um, our thesis is really kind of focused in that domain. And then furthermore, it's focused on, um, you know, when you're talking about the consumer facing front end of any business, it's really important to differentiate, right? Like if you have the same experience as everybody else, like it doesn't really influence purchasing patterns um, or people just kind of, you become sort of this commodity type thing. So differentiation really, really matters. and. And in that regard, if you don't build, you die because you're just at the whim of a vendor. And um, but in healthcare, we and in many other industries, right, we can't afford to build everything because our margins are not high enough. And let alone, I mean, they're negative these days, right? So we can't afford to build, and no other health system can afford to build over the fullness of time. And so we we need to buy. And so our thesis is we can build technology in our incubator that will that we will ultimately turn into new codes that get externally financed by the market and allow us to buy and still differentiate. And it will allow other health systems to buy and differentiate. And so that's kind of the core thesis around where, where we decide to build. It's support capturing, generating, aggregating and capturing demand different in a differentiated way and do so in a way that allows us to buy technology and still build a differentiated experience. Those are kind of the two core areas that we aim to um, or core objectives that we have. Um, and then and then we do, you know, the build by analysis within that context. Thank you. You know, it's, it's fascinating. Adam and I talk about oftentimes we really have this hypothesis that if organizations focus on patient centric outcomes and and the needs of the patient, that the, the business will follow the the provider centric outcomes will follow. You talk about how important the business model is for your decisions to buy or to build. Uh, how do you factor in the consumer side, the patient side into that business model? How do you look at that through that lens to help build out those cases that may not be perfectly oh, yeah. uh, clear what the ROI will be? Yeah, you know, you, you asked this and I forgot to answer it in the previous question, but really like um, we ha it comes down to understanding how customers behave and how they adopt technology. And so we measure that along the way. And, um, and, you're, and one way of doing that is so within, I'll go back to the um, identity driven engagement platform that we've built, we can, we know how many folks are signing up through our identity platform, how many of them are actually becoming active users and we can see their behavior throughout the digital platform. And then we can connect that. So product, um, be like product instrumentation and product metrics, we can connect that to outcome um, from a system standpoint to say, look, on this channel, we get more engagement and we get more, um, uh, let's in this case, like a financial metric, we get more contribution margin per per user than we do in a channel that is not personalized, not differentiated. In our case, it's our you know consumer facing kind of EMR portal, and so we're able to tr track that and connect it all the way through to make a case for why these investments are important. Ultimately, it gets down to how customers behave what supports them in adoption, what supports them ultimately in outcomes, though we're still earlier in that process, right? As, an, as a sector, it's, it is still hard to draw the thread through from discovery through the actual improved outcome. And there are all sorts of other sort of factors there, um, but that's, that's the ultimate goal. So we can, we can track that through. And the other thing I'll say is we include um, uh, patients in, all of our uh, testing, 
And we look at like, how easy is it for you to find a specific service? Like, what are the things that matter to you, right? We can see how folks are navigating through to things that matter to them and then build even better experiences around those things to help support them in accomplishing what they're trying to accomplish. So let, let's peek around the corner for a moment and, and what ought to be coming down the road, what, where you'd like to see patient, consumer, engagement and innovation happen where do you think it needs to go next um you know the first step is really about um about those authenticated ident uh, individualized experiences and just like what you had articulated like you know when you shop online um it's personalized to you and your pro your front page on Amazon or whatever is different from my, my front page on Amazon because of what we know, what they know about us, what we've historically purchased and so on. So that's all based on identity. And so I think identity is like the first step in um, and it's about driving individualized kind of personalized care as opposed to like putting people into, frankly, kind of like corny um, uh, personas like I don't purchase as a persona, I purchase as an individual, right? Or I engage in things as an individual. And so so it, that's fundamentally rooted in identity. I think that's number one. Number two is um, making it easy for me to get the services that I historically have associated with a healthcare system, but in, or in, or healthcare, but in a increasingly sort of disaggregated, decentralized um, world where care is being, delivered all over, right? You mind might be a con I might be a concierge patient. I might episodically use um, virtual visits through some provider just because I was able to get in, you know, like there's all sorts of things happening there. You know, I might want to use Tia as a young woman who's interested in care and lifestyle types of healthcare related things. So that's step two is getting things kind of in a coherent place that are healthcare related. And then the third thing is, it's not just about health care, it's about health and connecting to all of the various resources that are relevant to me, um, the full ecosystem. And so I think that's the progression of things. And, you know, wellness has really struggled um, in terms of like, there's a huge industry out there, right? But fundamentally, there is, um, you know, it, it's kind of episodic in its own way, and that people lose interest. And, you know, uh, how many you know, poor, lost, dead Fitbits are there out there um, where you just can't, you know, people don't engage necessarily unless there's some sort of athlete over a really long period of time. And so I think it's first, like, start to get to know people via identity and, you know, um, who they are. Second, it's start to aggregate their healthcare stuff and, and present it to them in a coherent fashion that's personalized to them. And then the third is expand to, um, relevance in more than just delivery. So, Sarah, we have a wide variety of, uh, of folks that listen to our podcast. I'm curious, for those that may be starting out on this digital health journey or, or noticing that they have a gap, perhaps, in how they focus on the patient in their technology needs, what advice would you give others as, as they're looking to increase their focus on the patient? Um, think about the patient one more than just a patient. Think about them as an individual and do all like these things are not mutually exclusive. So surveys are fine. They are useful in identifying certain opportunities. It's almost like a heat map, right? Like where do I have an opportunity to improve? Um, but it's, uh, I think they can potentially be, you know, there are some sorts, uh, some types of data and, um, that are potentially more misleading in others. And I think surveys are one of those areas because they're, again, they're after the fact. You're asking more about like, um, like, what did you think or what was your perception as opposed to how would you actually behave? One really clear example of this is like, if you ask people in real life, like, would you rather go and talk to a provider right now via FaceTime or go sit in an office? Which one would you do? like draw it, get in your car, drive, go sit in an office, wait, and then see your provider. The vast majority of people say 
I would rather just talk to a provider via FaceTime now, but their behavior is different, right? So you need to uh, you need to do both of these things. You need to understand what they say they would do as well as understand what they actually do behavior wise. Um, and uh, and so look at all of these different things together. Um, behavior, uh, what they would say after the fact, um, and uh, and then measure it all. And do it on a, like, get as much as you possibly can in terms of um, identity, like knowing the person. That's like, that's the first step. Um, And, uh, and, and so that's what's really going to allow you to um, intervene um, in the right way or, you know, intervene. I really mean like create solutions that are important to individuals. Um, so, so that's a couple of things that I would say. And then um, include patients and folks in your product development, in your program development. So test with them, right? Like we always do testing and we go through and like, in some cases we learn a lot about somebody like not being able to, for instance, find something that we thought was totally obvious on our digital platforms, right? There's a lot of like intuitive things that we um that we can do. And in some cases there isn't something intuitive and we we create it and then we're like, oh, that really didn't work. Right. So include patients along the way and actually how they would interact with something. Um, and and I think that's really powerful. Again, as opposed to just being like, hey, what did you think about this thing? Sara, so interesting and so much to to think about in today's conversation. We really appreciate your leadership and time and and uh, guiding us today. Um, thank you very, very much. Uh, any any parting words you'd like to share with our listeners? Knowing know me is like the the key. That's all I would say is get to know folks holistically um, and. Uh, not from your own lens, but from their lens. Excellent. Well, the, the phrase, know me, care for me, ease my way, that's, that's really special and thoughtful and uh, a, a great message for the entire industry. And so, hey, it's a treat to have you here. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me. It was a great conversation. I always enjoy spending time with you all. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Dan, another great interview uh, on the podcast. So happy we got to connect with Sarah Vazy and uh, all her great insights. Tell us what jumped out to you. You know, I, I love her approach and Providence's approach to the foundations of patient engagement. This isn't a problem that you can just solve by throwing technology at it. I, I loved this concept. She talked about uh, know me, care for me, and ease my way. And, and really she pointed back a couple of times to that first principle of knowing the patient, knowing their consumer behaviors, knowing the type of care that they might respond to, knowing uh, so much about them that it caused them to go out and build a solution that didn't exist in the market today, that consumer data platform she yeah. referred to. And, and what an innovative approach to, to use that as the backbone to other technologies and really personalize the experience for the patients. You, you and I both have experienced the the personalization in other industries that we engage with yep. and how convenient that becomes as you engage more and more with uh, an organization. She seemed to have a lot of science around consumerism and, and Providence thinking that way. Um, you know, we hear about it, but to get that granular, I thought was really interesting how, how much they've incorporated that and they not only believe it, but study it and teach it and understand um, you mentioned the consumer data platform and then and also the consumer identity data platform um, yeah it goes in line with exactly what you just said that uh, there's other industries that know consumers deeply and healthcare needs to catch up um, yeah. makes a ton of sense you know the other thing that jumped out to me uh, when we asked her where else do you want to see things go individualized experience yet again make it easier to get services I need and uh, health, health is one of the areas of focus, not just health care, um, and, and really bringing wellness into that discussion even more. So it'll be interesting to watch that forecast over the next several months and years and, and see how accurate she was. It feels, feels very accurate to me yeah. from what we see. 
You know, it's interesting. She talked also about um, the combination as Providence looks at the patient experience, the, the combination of what patients tell them in a survey versus w how they see the patients yeah. behave. Yeah. You remember she talked about that disconnect. That I, I think as you look at, um, she brought up the wellness example of people dis, uh, discarding their Fitbits at, over time. You know, how interesting is that people, almost anybody you ask is gonna say, yeah, I wanna be well, I wanna be healthy, but how do you create that behavior on an ongoing basis? The way we act often is very different from what we say we wanna do or say, what, we want to be so i just i just had a vision of a an archaeologist in the future discovering these <laughs> devices and oh at some point humanity used this actually count their steps can you believe it so yeah great great discussion today well um if i may dan i have a, a research minute i'd love to share with you Please. a call that we just took a couple days ago um this was with a chief health information officer that was using several technologies. Um, in, in addition, it, they were using Cerner for their EMR. They had uh, a scheduling tool, various communication tools, a different intake tool, which isn't that uncommon. Uh, but, but I guess the reason I bring it up, it's just further evidence of how the market is seeking that one-stop shop. And this provider even said as much, um, hey, we're having decent experiences with some of these products it'd really be nice to consolidate and get to one, one solution. And so not really a, a new exciting headline, but just a continuation of what we've been hearing for months and months. Um, that, that, uh, that sentiment is alive and well and uh, has really continued. And it really feels like the industry is starting to grab a hold of that idea. We're seeing more and more vendors developing broader and broader capability sets to yeah. try to become that one-stop shop. I think there will always be a need, as, as Sarah talked about, to fill in some of those gaps and identify where you need to augment via homegrown development or uh, purchasing solutions. But more and more, I think the industry is going to continue to trend that way towards the, the one-stop shop platform. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, we'd really like to thank again, Sarah Vesey, for participating in the podcast today and sharing her perspective. Um, it's always good to be with you, Adam. And, you as well. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our listeners and, and those who support us on developing this podcast. If you have any ideas for future uh, guests or future content, we'd invite you to reach out at patientengagement at classresearch.com.